Welcome YouTube, this is the Velvet Locks with a weight loss update video. Okay you guys, so much has happened, so much is going on, so much has stayed the same. Okay, we're going to get into that, I'm going to let you know exactly what I mean. Alright, well, I took some notes down of things that I wanted to bring to your attention uh, regarding my weight loss. Now currently, I have still lost some weight since my final update video. I've actually came down to 135 now, so I am officially 135 pounds. My top is still a medium. My bottom is now a size 9 in pants and a size 8 in dresses. So yes, I have definitely gone down in size and I think a lot of that has to do with my appetite still being so small. Now sometimes I think I'm not eating enough food. Sometimes uh, I kind of worry that I'm not eating enough because I'm not hungry. And even when I'm drinking like say my water, my detox waters, my teas, it's like I'm so full even from that that I cannot really eat a lot of foods. So my stomach has definitely shrunk even more whereas my appetite is very small. Okay, I do have moments when I am very hungry and I will eat. Um, but for the most part, my portions are very small. They're still pretty much half. I can only eat half of my portion. And um, that's how I trained myself. So it's so hard now to break out of that mental the thinking that I still do it, which is a good thing, but I kind of worry that I'm not getting enough food. I'm eating regular meals, still being very conscious minded of the things that I'm eating as far as rice, potatoes. Now I do eat those things now. I have dabbled a little with the white rice, more of the brown rice, but from time to time some white rice. Um, I do love my potatoes, but I'm trying very hard not to eat those too much. So I will have my little small portions of things that I know will help put weight on me but I'm eating smaller portions of those things and not too many of them within the same week. I'm still not, I still do not eat red meats. I pretty much eliminated all chopped meat out of my regimen. I mean, there's so many things going on right now with the red meats that I've pretty much deleted red meats from my regimen. I'm scared to eat red meats only because of all the, the, the nasty things that you see out there that people are doing to the red meats. But me, myself, just smelling the red meat, smelling the chopped meat, it's really hard for me to really want to eat it these days. The smell alone keeps me from it. That's a tip that I think all of you need to start doing because these days now, there's so many things going on with the red meats. There's so many fake meat out there. There's cloned meat out there and they're not healthy for you. There's no nutritional value, I think, in those, but regardless of the fact, they're not real. So I don't want that in my body. So red meat, x nay, and even with chicken. I'm getting tired of eating chicken. Oh my goodness, I'm so getting tired of eating chicken. Chicken, chicken, shrimp, fish, chicken, chicken, shrimp, fish. I'm tired of it, but <laughs> that's all I have, so, okay. Now, just this summer, me and my family went up to the mountains for a week, and during that time, I mean, we relaxed, we ate, I cooked, and I pretty much did okay up there. Although I dabbled a little, you know, with the pizza, and dabbled a little with, you know, the, the, the treats, and I was a little concerned that I might have gained five pounds because I felt that I looked a little heavier. Um, usually when I gain weight, the first place I notice it is in my face. So when I'm looking at one of my videos now, I'm like, wait a minute, you are looking a little chunky in the face. Gained some weight while you were up here. Well, it wasn't until I got back from the mountains that I got back on the scale and I was so nervous that I had gained five pounds. I was so scared to get back on that scale. And when I finally got on the scale, to my surprise, I had lost five pounds. I don't know how that happened. I have no idea how that happened. 
But I tell you like this, it must be the portions. It has to be the portions because even though I'm eating foods that I like to eat, my portions are so small that I don't know. I haven't gained the weight, so that's a good thing. <laughs> Now, I've noticed the changes in my skin. Now, once you've detoxed and you've lost all that weight and you you know, you have that loose skin, eventually your skin needs time to snap back. Now, I did a video on that on how to avoid loose and sagging skin. And this is a way that I have done to avoid the very loose skin, but to avoid getting it. Now, I did get some very minimum loose skin. And now I'm noticing that my skin is firming up, or should I say filling up. My skin is filling in. So it's not that loose feeling skin, it's more of a firmer skin now, so that's a good thing. My stomach is still flat, which is great. I'm still watching that like a hawk. I refuse to go back to my pooch, or pouch, or basket, or bucket, trunk whatever you want to call it I don't want that anymore so I've been watching it like a hawk I've been watching the foods that I eat and I've been very much keeping track of my stomach now I do still drink my detox waters which is how I control my belly so whenever I need I see that I need to like flush out extra water maybe I may feel a little bloated something that I've eaten who knows but keep things balanced I still drink my detox waters, my detox teas. They're very flavorful. That's another way that I get my hydration in. So I have been keeping on top of that, which is wonderful. But the teas are an awesome way to maintain your weight. So if whenever you, whenever you get to your weight goal, you should drink lots of teas, lots of waters, because that's how, that's what's going to help to keep you full longer and to keep you or keep your weight down okay you will not gain weight just drinking water so you're flushing out all those toxins all those you know metals and stuff in your body and you're keeping your stomach flat so that's a way that you can keep your stomach flat is drink lots of teas lots of waters if I'm eating something that I know I should not be eating I will definitely have my brags with it or I may have it afterwards when I get home just to be safe <laughs> just to be safe I do not put that much fat in my body and I'm trying very much not to so whenever I feel like I'm eating something that's extra fatty um, that's just not good for me I will definitely drink a glass of my Bragg's just to be safe the, the second part of that is I realize that when I do not drink my Bragg's I get hot flashes so much I get them like crazy and I mean I noticed when I stopped taking it I was constantly on fire I'm constantly flashing I'm going to have to experiment to see if this actually works but I noticed that when I don't take it I do get more flashes I get hot a lot and when I do take it I don't think I get them as much but I'm gonna do a little experiment just to see if that really has a connection with menopause and the hot flashes and hot sweat so I'm gonna see that I'm gonna check that out do a little experiment and get back to you on that another thing is I don't crave any foods even my avocados I don't crave those anymore I mean there was a time when they used to call me out my sleep now there was a time when cakes and all those little sugary stuff used to call me out my sleep but then I got addicted to avocados and I craved those every day I would have one every single day but the craving urge to want an avocado I don't have that craving urge anymore and that makes me upset because I don't want to ever not crave my avocados those are the, the most healthiest that's the most healthiest fruit you can ever have and I notice I don't crave them anymore now it's like I have to kind of force myself to eat an avocado I don't like that because I used to enjoy I couldn't wait to get downstairs slice it up you know even spoons just start eating it right away but now it's like I, I, I get it and it's more of a dread I don't know what that's about but it's more of a dread of eating it because it's no longer pleasurable maybe I ate too much of it I don't know but 
This body better get back into eating avocados. Okay, you better get back into eating avocados. But yes, I notice I don't crave them anymore. So, now I notice one thing though, when I do smell the scent of fast foods, like if you're passing, you're driving, and you're passing a restaurant, the smell of the fast foods, is, is it makes me sick. I noticed that lately. I can't stand the smell of Burger King. I can't stand the smell of Popeyes. I can't stand the smell of any crown fried, any type of chicken joint. <laughs> they don't even say that anymore. <laughs> any type of fast food spots, chicken spots, whatever you call them. If they're like, if they have those external blowers and you know, the, they, they, they blow up, they're blowing it outwards. But anyways, you smell it throughout the neighborhood. Well, when I smell those things, it bothers me. I don't know why. I just noticed these differences since I've lost my weight. I have no idea. Um, now, in the mornings, my routine has changed. I don't drink my brags as much as I used to in the mornings from time to time, once in a while. But I have developed now my morning routine of drinking warm water with lemon. Okay, my warm lemon water, and I'll just drink that straight, no sweetener. The less, the better. So, um, I'm trying to eliminate myself from drinking coffee. That's my morning, you know, I, that, that's my thing in the morning, my happy stuff, you know, but that's full with a lot of toxins. You know, coffee's not really good. It, it's good as, a, as far as hyping you up and giving you energy, but... I don't want that anymore so I've been really making more of an effort now to drink more green teas in the morning my hot water uh, my lemon water in the morning um, from time to time I still have my coffee but I'm trying to eliminate that because of the cream because of the sugar from time to time I'll have just black coffee but still don't enjoy the taste of black coffee so I'm trying to wean myself from desiring coffee so that's something that I've been trying to do. The, the major thing that I've noticed about myself from losing the weight is I'm so scared now to gain it back. Now, you have to be very careful when you are losing your weight that you don't mentally start developing these, you know, or illnesses regarding foods. And that kind of made me a little worrisome because I'm like, uh, well, I'm not eating as much as I used to, which is a good thing. But now that I've lost the weight, it's like I'm scared now to eat certain foods because I know those foods will put the weight back on me. So it's like it's like a little mental battle that I'm going through regarding my foods and trying not to fall into that pit of um, any type of food disorders. You gotta be very careful with that, especially when you're trying to maintain a weight loss not to develop any type of food disorders in the meantime because of being paranoid of regaining that weight back. So that's something that I'm, I've been noticing now that uh, I have to break, you know, the habit and the thoughts of being scared to eat, you know. A lot of times I may not know what I want to eat. You know, I don't desire a lot of things anymore. So I'll just nibble on something and go to bed and that's not healthy so gotta eat properly you guys gotta eat properly and I noticed that was not cool so I've been doing that from time to time when I just don't feel like making something or going out and getting something a lot of times if I don't know what I want to eat I'll just run and get soup um, I'll go to the Caribbean the Jamaican restaurants in the neighborhood and I know the ones that actually make the best soups and certain days or certain days they make certain soups so that's what I do when I don't know what I want to eat and I don't want to eat the wrong stuff or start developing a habit again of eating the wrong foods I'll just eat something homemade and healthy go and get me some homemade soup full with all the vegetables everything in there so it, it's that's how I work I love my soups I'll eat my chicken soup my red pea soup so yeah that's what I'll usually eat if I don't know what I want to eat. If I don't want to go to sleep hungry, I'll eat a soup. I'll drink soup. Now, I still take my multivitamins, my hair, nail, and skin vitamins. 
especially if I didn't eat an avocado, you know, my multivitamins. I will only take my multivitamins if I didn't have an avocado for the day. Now, the only reason being is because why bother taking a multivitamin when all of those multivitamins is in the avocado? So it's full, it's full, it's full, it's full with everything you need for your body, which is why I do eat an avocado every day to, to eat my multivitamins. But when I don't have my avocado, then I will eat or take my multivitamins, my supplements, as far as my hair supplements, my nail supplements. I've gotten so many positive updates on you guys and your journey and the weight losses that you've been having even after being on the brags for two weeks you've already expressed you've lost eight pounds you've lost this pound that pounds and that is so awesome and I commend all of you who are on this journey who are doing it who are faithful to it who have been encouraged by my videos who have seen changes in their bodies the same things that I've told you, you're experiencing it and you're excited and I'm so happy for every last one of you. I'm grateful. But there are those of you who have been on it for two weeks and maybe expect the miracle. You've seen other people losing the weight or you've heard other people losing the weight and you've done it but you haven't lost the weight. Now, like I mentioned in a few of my videos, it could also be other things why you're not losing the weight. It could be a medical problem. It could be medication. It could be your body just needs more detoxing than the normal person. You know, so everybody's body is different. Because I may have seen changes in two weeks, and another person may have seen changes within a week or two, doesn't necessarily mean that you may see it. It depends on what you're doing. It also depends on what you're eating. A lot of times you, you guys may think that, all right, well, I'm going to cut back. I'm not going to have four pieces of pizza. I'll just have three. Or I'm going to cut back and I'll just have a glass of beer. Or I'll have a so diet soda. Okay. Or I'll have some, you know, some starches and some carbs, but I won't have as much. These are the things and the reasons why you're not losing the weight. Bragg's is not going to lose the weight for you. That's a good one. Braggs is not gonna lose the weight for you. You gotta do it yourself. You gotta make an effort to make a change. If you think by drinking this concoction that you're just gonna lose weight magically, it's not gonna work. I keep telling you guys this. It has to be an effort on your part. It has to be a will on your part. So you have to do something as well. Make the changes necessary to be healthier. Then you will see results. Stop looking at the scale every second. You're not going to see it. You're paranoying yourself into wanting to lose this weight and you're getting frustrated when you do not see the results. Don't do that. Stay away from the scale for at least a month. Let the changes happen internally and then get the surprise you need when you finally jump on the scale. But if you're watching your weight every single day and you're watching the scale every single day, that's not going to help you. So give yourself some time. Stop looking at everyone else's results and comparing yourself and thinking that you should be getting it as well. You should, but it may take you longer. So you just have to just, you know, have some patience. That's it. Now, lastly, I must say that my taste buds have changed, which is why I don't crave certain foods anymore, which is why I don't even crave my avocados anymore. But being that I don't add sugar to my foods, and I don't eat and drink sweets. Even my fruits are too sweet. Oh my gosh. I have to tell you a story. Um, I went to an event at church. And um, during the end of the event, they had a nice beautiful display of fruit salad on the table. And everyone was welcome to it. So they had the cantaloupe. They had the honeydew, the watermelon, the strawberries, the blackberries. I think that was it. I'm not sure. There might have been a few others. Pineapples beautiful spread of fruits. So I helped myself to a nice little bowl of fruit and water. I did not believe, and I could not believe how sweet these fruits were. Now, <laughs> I did a video on um, as far as being diabetic and the kind of fruits that you have to be very mindful of as far as being a, a, you know, a diabetic and how certain fruit, fruits are much sweeter. There's, 
there's high sugar fruits and low sugar fruits. Well, it didn't hit me until that day when I actually started eating the fruits. And I couldn't believe how overly sweet the cantaloupes were, how overly sweet the honeydew was, how overly sweet the strawberry was. I couldn't handle it. It was too much sugar. The only one that I enjoy and I cannot stand is watermelon. It wasn't sweet, it was just the right amount of water that I needed to quench my thirst from all that sugar I was eating. So it's like, now my taste buds have changed, certain fruits are just too sweet. Certain drinks, I cannot drink regular fruit juice unless I juiced it myself. Um, the regular store bought fruit juices are overly sweet. If they're not organic, I cannot drink it too much sugar is in there even if it says hundred percent fruit juice it has also they've also added sugar into that so it's just too sweet and things like that I can't I cannot I can't enjoy it I really can't from time to time I'll just I'll just drink it but my taste buds have changed they really have I don't crave things anymore the way I used to and I'm very sensitive now my palate is more sensitive now to salts, to sugars, yeah, very sensitive. So if I taste something that may have a little too much sugar in it, boom. So yeah, when you drink a lot of waters, you're gonna realize that your taste buds for the sugary drinks, you're not gonna enjoy them anymore. It's gonna be too much for you. It's gonna be overpowering. It's, it's gonna be like, I can't have this. I'd rather drink my water. And that's a good thing to do, honestly. It really is. Because all of those things are just a lot of extra additives and preservatives and stuff your body really does not need. So that's it for my update, you guys. I mean, I have really surprised myself to see that I'm still shrinking even now that I'm not trying to. And that's where my worry, I guess, came in when I was scared that I wasn't getting enough food. I wasn't eating enough food. So you just have to be very mindful, be very patient, and be very cautious. Cautious as to not develop these mental food issues, okay, food disorders, as well as just not being paranoid now that you've lost the weight and being paranoid to eat. That's my, <laughs> that's my dilemma right now. So all is well, you guys. I mean, I feel great, I feel healthy. And you know, let me tell you a story. Not even a story. It's gotten to the point where certain people are just not used to seeing me like this. I mean, I was this weight way before, you know. And now that I'm back at this weight, a lot of people are like wondering. I mean, they didn't know I was on a weight journey, but it's just so surprising when someone sees you and instead of giving you a compliment or just saying, you know, oh wow, I noticed you lost a lot of weight. But there, you know, this, the, the, I've had someone approach me and ask me if I'm okay. <laughs> and I'm like, excuse me, what do you mean? And she's like, yeah, are you okay? Because I noticed you lost a lot of weight. You know, are you having any issues in your body? Or, and honestly, you guys, I laughed it off the whole time I was standing there and I was insulted because instead of somebody being happy for you or thinking something positive, why is it the first thing people think when you lose weight is that you're sick? Now, not every person losing weight is sick. So that kind of bothered me and it troubled my spirit to see how some people actually think that regardless of the positive things that you're doing and the changes that you've done for your own benefit, for your own health, and for your own happiness. But yet there are people watching you and they're sitting there and they're so negative. And all they can think of is negative things to say to you. So with that being said, I wanna encourage all of you, and this is my closing, that regardless of the naysayers out there, and the people on the sidelines that notice that you've lost your weight or that you're losing weight, they don't see or know that you're on a journey, but they're seeing the changes. 
Whenever anyone comes to you in a negative response regarding your weight, don't receive it. Don't receive it. Be happy and make the changes you want to make for yourself. Don't make changes to make others happy or do it for other people. My booby doesn't like the fact that I lost all my weight. He really wants me to gain some of it back. And sorry, darling. No, not today. <laughs> I'm enjoying my weight, so you need to come down to my size now. Well, no, not my size. No, 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 no. But anyways, don't let others tell you what you should do to make yourself happy. If losing the weight is what you need to make yourself happy, to feel healthier, to feel stronger, then you do it for you. And regardless of the people out there that are saying, oh, oh she looks sick, oh, she must have cancer, oh, she must have HIV AIDS, ignore them, okay? You know you're healthy, you know the journey you were on, and document your journey as well. So this way, when they want to say, oh, I've been on this for such and such, just like I mentioned to that same person, well, if you want to know how I lost my weight, just check out my YouTube channel where I share my journey with others. So with that being said, ignore the negative people out there, the people who are not happy for you, and the haters on the sideline wishing they can do it, and they're hating you because you're actually doing it. So don't allow those people into your mind space. Do it for you. All right, and thank you so much, you guys. I love you all. You have been wonderful. You've been great to me. I love your responses. I love your updates. I love the love, and that's what this channel is about, sharing, all right? So thank you so much again, and I will see you in the next video.